I have necessarily like lost anything if I miss this episode. No, I don't think so. I don't. Um, I mean, it's good to listen to. It's good information to stay in the know. But for the general audience, the general gamer, I think it addresses the whole issue of, you know, exclusive games. But then everything else is kind of like we kind of already caught on to that. We already understand that. I mean, we understand that it's already like you're thinking about what the next gen is going to be. That's like five, six years out. But we know a refresher is coming. We know that, you know, we're halfway through the life cycle just based off of the trends of the previous generations of consoles. We understand that you are kind of in a way since with all of these, you know, acquisitions that you've gone through and studios you've picked up. We understand that it's just for you to cement yourself even more so into the gaming industry and our consumer base. Um, so that type of information isn't really new. Like we, we understand that already. Um, I just want a little bit more of like just direct, just tell us if you are going to keep, you know, your first party games as, you know, tied to your. Like, and I, even then, I understand that. I get it. If you're making your first party games that Microsoft developed or Activision or Blizzard on Xbox and the Xbox ecosystem for either forever or even for a limited time, I get that. That is something that you created that obviously you want gamers to come to your ecosystem to play and to stay there. That is just business in general. I get it. But I feel like that initial part felt like, you're trying to be nice and not so businessy, but it felt like you're just kind of dancing around that topic of like, yes, mm. I get it. Why only those four and why only four? For now, right? Yeah, for now. But like, why is that the initial like just four? Like, I feel like you could, ex I feel like there's certain games that I can't, don't ask me which ones off the top of my head right now, but I feel like there could have been more than four games that started off in this initial batch. Yeah. Starfield and Indiana, would you have added those? Mm, maybe not Starfield, not just yet. Indiana. Yeah, I would have definitely. Yeah. It's interesting. So uh, a question for you, right. And, and question for you, you know, listening, watching, do exclusives still sell consoles today? Think about Nintendo, we think about PlayStation, we think about Xbox and what they're doing. Do we still, are we still moved to spend $300, $400 on a console because of a game? I think when it comes to Nintendo, yes. That's that's a definite yes for Nintendo. <laughs> yes. Yes. All their stuff is expensive. All their so, stuff. <laughs> right. For Nintendo, the, the answer 100%. is 100%. Yes. Now when it comes to Sony and Microsoft, No. I don't okay. I don't think so. OK, I'm going to push back. So do you think Spider-Man 2 moved individuals to go get the PlayStation 5 that didn't have a PlayStation 5, of course, before Spider-Man 2? No, because the thing is, I think like because I think it moved 10 million. I think it moved 10 million. I I I kind of almost don't think so. Like, does it do I think that there's a that's a driving force and that there's people who do? Yes. But I, do I think it is as a parent and 100% the driving force right now? No, like maybe before it, it was. If you ask me for the previous gens, it is. But I think, I think when it comes down to it, when it comes to the Xbox players, a good portion of them also have PCs. Um, and if there's anything that I've learned is people can be patient amazingly. Like there's, there's impatient players, but then you have them that- You said have patient or impatient? Um, patient. Okay, cool patient that they're willing to wait for it to be ported to pc 100 percent. like I, I i think i see that the ones that are impatient and they, they just want to jump to yeah they're going to go and buy uh they're going to go and buy the playstation but here's the thing too and this is a mentality i still have um and i i will say like i have access to a lot of these games um but i'm not driven to go buy myself an xbox right now I have my PC. I can play a lot of those games and I have my PlayStation. I can play a lot of those games, but I don't feel like I am necessarily restricting myself on what type of games I have. Whereas before, and I don't own an Xbox right now because I have the game pass. Yeah. You know, so you that, know is, that, is? that is something that's really huge for me, but in the previous, in the previous generations and for a, like a long time, what pushed me to really get an Xbox or really get a PlayStation 
is if there is at least five games, mm. five exclusive games on that platform that I want to play at that moment, I will go and buy it. Will I buy it for just one game? No, because I want to get my money's worth out of the four, five, six hundred dollars I'm going to be spending on this new console. Yeah, I don't think we're moved as much to uh, and maybe we're speaking from a privileged place. I don't know, but I'm not moved to buy a console just for one game anymore. And I think with Epic Games giving free games all the time and Steam selling, you know, all the things that they sell, I think they have a current Ubisoft publisher sale going on right now until the end of the month. But all those things and cross play and and all that stuff. There's just nothing that, you know, and and PlayStation we're going to talk about later, which I want to bring that in. But and what they're doing, you know, in terms of looking at the market, which we'll talk about a little bit later, there's no reason unless you're going for Mario. (laughs) There's no reason to like really focus on anything, you know, for a particular uh, ecosystem. You know, we know Nintendo does whatever they want and we're always going to focus on on what they're doing 130 plus million sold i mean it's just insane versus playstation and versus xbox is absolutely ridiculous when you think about it so but every I year one, one yeah go ahead thing about the decision if it and at one point and for a lot of people i know this is true at one point the deciding factor of what the games that were on multiple platforms was deciding which version am i going to play call of duty on xbox or i'm going to play it on playstation i played it on xbox with the majority of my friends Played it on Xbox. And then the same thing goes like, am I going to buy this platform? Because most of my friends have this one or have that one. Adults, I'm not saying we're not all adults, but if there's anything else I've also learned, and this week definitely brought that to, to light for me, is as you get older, you start caring less about which ones you your friends play on because we have no time. <laughs> um, I, I, I I got tired of like trying to set up game dates with friends because we're working. We all have different schedules. We have families. We have kids. So right now I'm just looking for which which platform has the best single player experience because I ain't got no friends who got time. Right. <laughs> like I had to have a phone call with a friend who literally lives 20 minutes away from me. But with our work schedules, I haven't seen him in eight months. Mm. I haven't hung out with him in just as much time. And I just happened to be able to talk to him yesterday for the first time in like in forever. And maybe twice a year we have time to hang out if that. So even friends, um, whether they be friends that you have locally or friends that you have online, finding that time, it's hard. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. Like single player experiences, you mentioned that. So I, I want to touch on that for a second. Uh, Spider-Man. Uh, Then you have Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and you have God of War. And then you have, I don't remember the name of this particular title. Um, It was a guy with a motorcycle. His name was Deacon. It was a PlayStation PlayStation exclusive. I don't remember. I don't remember what title that was. If you know in in the comments, please mention it. Um, That got to PC. All those titles got to PC. And I see Spider-Man 2 launch and I'm like, that's going to come to PC at some point. Right. Because Spider-Man is there. Miles Morales is there. God of War is there. OK. Horizon Zero Dawn is there. Right. And we can go down the list of all the titles that are making their way. So it's like and I completely agree with you. There's no rush for the the PC gamer. You know, we're, we're, we're super patient. And we know at some point those games are going to cost two dollars, four dollars, depending on the platform. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to get it. That's just that's just where we are with that. So a couple of more things. Xbox leadership seemingly confirms one of my favorite games, Call of Duty for October. Like we're not surprised that we're getting another Call of Duty. Right. And the current one is really good. You know, besides what I hear people saying online about the current model warfare, I think it's really great. I I think it's really great. I'm really enjoying myself when I when I play that. Any thoughts on Call of Duty? I know you're not on the Call of Duty train, but what do you think about what they're doing with, with the series from what you hear? I guess from, from what I talk about it, when, when I talk about it. I mean, clearly it's still doing good. I mean, as much as people complain about Call of Duty year after year, same thing for every iteration come October, November. It's just a cycle. And then people like, I oh, excited, depressed, get it, 
love it. 